This short video talks a little bit about data binding and about item renderers. Now an item renderer is basically if you have a component that's built up of a bunch of smaller pieces and you want to customize each of the smaller pieces that make up the larger object, that's what an item renderer does. The item renderer builds each one of those items. So you build like a template to create all the smaller pieces. So right now what I've got in this uh, small project is a view-based application. I'll run it here just so you can see. Um, there's a few pages in here. Um, page home has links to the other two pages. Page 3 is where I'm going to build a list view, bind it to some data, and then use an item renderer. All right. So inside Flash Builder we've got 3.mxml. This is the third page. And I've got two different data sets. One is an array list with the ID myinfo. You can see it's got a whole bunch of flex objects inside of it with a data and a label property. These words, label has some meaning, but we can put anything we want inside of here. And then here's another one called Bob, which is basically just the the same thing. Data and label, a number and a letter. Same sort of data. This one goes up to six. This one only goes up to five, but two different data sets. So on this page, what I want to do is I want to create a list view, so a list object. I'm going to give it the ID, my list, and then there is a data provider property. Inside here, we need to use the curly braces around the name of the data set that we want to use. Now, these are both array lists. So either my info or Bob, I can use either one of these. Copy that, put it inside here. That's going to work. Um, and just for display purposes, I'm going to set the width to 100% of its container, which means that it's going to fill up the width of the screen, less the padding that I've set on the left and right. So we'll load this project again. There we are. And if I go to page 3, there it is. Now you notice, I didn't set any other properties other than the data provider. So label automatically gets placed into the list as the value shown inside each of the list items. If I want to specify, there is actually a label field property. And you can say which of the fields from your data so right here, my bound data, my array list. I want the data field to be the one that's used. So I'll run that again. There we are. Jump to screen three, and now I get the numbers. If I change this over and say I'm going to use the data set Bob, and I want the label, which is the default, but just to demonstrate it. Page 3. There we are. So up to E. There is the Bob array list being bound to the list. Okay, so that is data binding. Now, for the next part here, the item renderer, I'm going to remove that part. I'm going to leave Bob attached to this. What I want to do um, is I want to create an item renderer. So we will go inside here, create an item renderer tag. Inside that, we're going to create a component tag. Now, those two parts have to be there. I'm going to create an item renderer. It's a component. And then inside that, I can set up which kind of item renderer I want. Now, the de default is an actual item renderer tag same as the one above, and then it's going to have the label. I want to do something a little bit better than that. I'm going to use the icon item renderer, because this one just gave me a little bit more information. If I'm just going to do the regular item renderer, it's no different than me putting the label field up here. So item renderer inside here, um, 
it needs to have inside of it the fields that we want to use. Now an I icon item renderer has four parts to it. There's an icon on the left called the icon field. There's a headline called the label field. There's a smaller text field below the label called the message field. And then there's a decorator icon which would go on the right. The decorator icon is going to be basically the same for all of them. The icon on the left, the icon field, is going to change for each one. Now, I don't have any images right now, but I'm just going to put in the label field and the message field. So for the label field, I'm going to use label. And for the message field, I'm going to use data. So data will appear smaller and down below the label. So if we run this, there, I'll jump into here. There we go. A, B, C, D, E, those are the labels. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, those are the message fields. If we had the icons, they'd be here and here. Okay. Now, that's building an item renderer inside of the page. If we want, we can actually extract this, get rid of that entirely. So we're back to just having our list, and I can create the item renderer as a separate file. So to do that, we're going to go File, New, Item Renderer, this setting right here under the File New menu. Okay, so it's going to default to views again. I like to organize my code a little bit more. I actually create a package for them. You can create skins this way as well, create a package for the skins. I'm going to call mine my R for my renderer. And you can see the template here, icon item renderer, because if you're just doing the standard item renderer, it's just adding the label field or the label function. We'll show you the label function in a minute. Icon item renderer, there it is. Now, these are the properties that we can set. So the label field, we wanted to use data. Message field was the label. Those are just getting these things. If we change the names of these, we could put different names in here. All right, I will say finish. Boom, there it is. So it has created for me a separate file called myr.mxml. It's inside the, oops, there we go. It's inside the renderer's package my r.mxml okay well, minimize that again so this is my file and now over here inside my list component i just want to say that my item renderer is and there it is there's the one that i created right at the top of the list renderers package my r is the name of the file save that, run it again, and it's going to be doing the same thing as we had before when it was embedded within the MXML. There we go. Alright, so that is an embedded and an external item renderer, and the one that we're using is the icon item renderer. If you're not going to use the icons, if you don't need multiple text fields, just use the standard item renderer. Alright, now the last thing that we wanted to look at was actually attaching some functionality. So let's say that we have inside of here, we've got a label field and a message field, but in the message field, I don't want to put just the label. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually remove that. Instead, I'm going to put in a message function. I'm going to create a function in here called setInfo. Now, if the item renderer were inside of 3.mxml, I could create the function there. Right, so, here we are. Now, I'm in between the opening and closing tag. 
because this is the root tag for the file, I have to put my script inside here. So there's my script tag inside here. I'm going to put a function called set info. It's going to give back to the item renderer a string because that is what needs to be set inside the message field is a string. It will give me something that I can call anything I, I want. I'm going to use the variable name item because that makes a bit more sense, but I can use any variable name I want. Now what's being passed in here are each of the objects out of our bound data set. The array list that is filled with objects, that's what's coming in here. So we're going to say object because that's what's being passed in. So we have to return a string and what I want to do is I want to say it's going to be item, that's my variable, dot data plus space plus item dot label. And if you want to put something in between them, let's put a couple of colons in there. Run this again. Now you'll find that my message field has two things inside of it. There we go. There's item.data, item.label. If you want to do some calculations on this instead, you can do that. Say, um, take a number, say item.data times 13. There we go. And then instead of returning item.data, I'm going to return my new calculated value num followed by item.label and there it is so we could have put this function back on page 3 if the item renderer were back on page 3 so if we had put the embedded icon item renderer in between the open and closing list tags then I would have put the function inside of it from here, come over here. I just would have gone inside of my function here. One last thing, the bindable, just in case you're still wondering about that. You see I put this keyword, the meta tag, meta data tag right here, the square brackets around it. If I leave that off, I can run this. I'm using Bob in my data set. Hey, it still works. The problem isn't the initial rendering. The problem is, if in your code at some point you update this, if you want this list to reflect changes that are made to Bob, then you need to have bindable written before the variable. And that's it. That's more about data binding, item renderers internally and externally.